Sampling plans. This is the module on microbiological testing of foods, and this lecture covers microbiological test sampling plans. This presentation will cover the design of sampling plans and limitations of direct product testing. It will emphasize that a well-designed sampling plan should aim to find a pathogen and that direct product testing works well as routine verification that good manufacturing practices and preventive controls are properly implemented. Product testing by itself will not ensure a safe or quality product. It does provide some assurances that your product is not adulterated. Ensuring that good manufacturing practices and your validated processes are followed are much better indicators that your product will be of high quality and free of pathogens compared to final product testing. Microbiological testing should be used as a verification that your good manufacturing practices and preventive controls are working as intended to keep microbial loads low and products pathogen free. A processor needs to think critically when designing a sampling plan. An effective sampling plan is one that tries to find the problem, i.e. a pathogen. It is very easy to design a microbial sampling plan that will never find a pathogen in your product. It is in your best interest to catch contaminated product before it enters commerce. No one wants to put others at risk and the outbreaks can have long lasting impacts on your business. Many smaller scale processors have been put out of business due to an outbreak. The take home is to try to find the problem and correct the issues internally before any product enters commerce. You will never be able to test 100% of the product leaving your facility. That's a no-brainer. Product testing has limitations due to this fact. Since we are taking a small subsample of the product leaving our facility, there is always the possibility that we will miss the target pathogen of concern. In fact, the probability is high that we will miss a target pathogen through product testing. In this very simple example, we are a flour producer that is doing some end product testing for E. coli 0121. We are pulling a one bag sample from each pallet we produce. 50 five pound bags make up a pallet. What if we have one contaminated bag but we select one for our testing that is not contaminated. We also cannot test an entire five pound bag for E. coli 0121. We have to take a subsample. If we select 30 grams of flour from that five pound bag, even if we selected the contaminated bag, there is still a chance that we miss the pathogen in our subsampling. Also remember that detection limit mentioned previously. Even if we pick the contaminated bag and the contaminated subsample, we may still miss the pathogen if it is at a low level that we cannot detect with our analytical method. Hopefully, this example gives you some perspective on why we tell you product testing does not ensure that you have a safe product on your hands. Another complication and limitation to sampling plans is determining when and what to test. In this example, we have a product that is formulated from raw ingredients, sealed in a package, and then sent through a kill step, similar to what you may have with a canned product. Here, it would make sense that we do a microbial test after the kill step. But what is a better method to ensure that our product is pathogen free? Making sure that our kill step is validated to control those pathogens and verifying that that scheduled process is followed for each lot of product. However, if you had a very high microbial load coming in on your raw ingredients, that validated kill step may not be effective. So perhaps some raw ingredient testing would be warranted. A better approach would be to ask your supplier for their validated process as assurance that microbes are controlled in raw ingredients. 
The take home is that there are numerous limitations to product testing, and even the best designed sampling plan may not detect a pathogen when it is present. In summary, a sampling plan should be designed to find a pathogen. Microbial testing should be used to verify that good manufacturing practices and preventive controls are properly implemented. Product testing does not ensure safety or quality.